guys, Miss Elise here. We're going to start our next lesson for today, which is going to be about still lifes. And I've got a few pictures here on um, different types of still lifes. And a still life is basically a painting an artist has um, previously arranged items for them to paint. So you can see that the traditional still lives may have vases, bowls, um, fruit, those sorts of things. Here's another one that has some bowls and has a bucket and some fruit. And then the last one is mainly a fruit bowl. So we're going to take these items today and we are going to create our very own still life. And this one is going to be more abstract than our images, which is more realistic. So we're going to have this tablecloth that you see, and it's going to be kind of monochromatic. And what monochromatic means is one color. So when I painted this example for us, the tablecloth, I only used the color red. But what I did was I used white and black to give us different shades or tints of the same color. So this is a monochromatic technique. So we're going to do this today. So the materials that you will need is a pencil, drawing paper, a sharpie, acrylic paint, and you only need, again, like I said, one color of acrylic paint, depending on what color you want to do your tablecloth, in addition to black and white acrylic paint so that you can get different um, values. Markers, brushes, um, paper towels and a cup of water. We also need a ruler so that we can grid off our tablecloth. What we're going to do today is instead of using watercolor, you can actually use markers that appear to have watercolor um, technique, but it's actually you're not using watercolor, you're actually using markers. So this will be a great way for you to learn a new technique today. So let's get started. So my example, we did it landscape. In this video, I want to try it portrait. I think it'll give us a different view, but I also want to give you either option. You can either do it landscape, where you have your paper going long way side to side, or portrait, where you have your long paper going up and down in a portrait, like this. Okay, so we're going to need our pencil and eraser to start, and our ruler. So I'm going to turn my paper temporarily landscape because I need to know how long my paper is. And my paper is 13 and a half inches. Okay, so I need to go six and a half and a quarter will be my halfway point. Hopefully your paper is an even number to help you more easily. And then I'm going to use my ruler to draw my straight line going across. Then I'm going to measure how long the portrait direction is, which is 11 inches. And I believe on my example, I did one inch examples. I'm going to, because my paper is um, not as long, I'm going to, I'm going to make them a little bit longer. So two and three fourths. So I know my example had one inches, but I'm going to do about two and three fourths. So basically I just kind of want to break it up so that it has four parts going across. And then I'm going to do the same thing going this way, which of course is going to be a complicated number because my paper's not even. I'm only going to break it into three sections. So however you want to do your checkered so that you have an even number and yours is not as complicated as mine, um, evenly using your, and then you want to draw your lines. So I did my checker, like I said, a little bit bigger, as you can see. Um, but again, you do it however is easiest for you to use your ruler and do some dividing with your math, okay? 
from here, I'm going to add some objects. So I want to put some vases or bowls of, of different bearing um, fruits. So I might even look at some of my examples to get some idea of what I want to do. And I feel free to Google images of different things that you might want to add or take away. But I think I'm going to do a bowl for sure for my fruit. So let's see, let's do a slight curved line here. And I'm going to curve this over here. So I can already tell I've gone up too high because I want it to look like a bowl. This is kind of looking more like a vase. So I'm going to come down a little bit and I'm going to create that curve line so that it looks like more like a bowl. And you can extend it a little bit because the top part's edge can go out a little bit. And I'm going to grab my big eraser to erase the lines that I don't need. <clears throat> and then we don't want the checkered tablecloth to go through our solid pieces. So I need to erase those checkered lines. Now you almost want to do an oval and I'm just going to lightly do it because once I put my fruit in there, I'm going to have to erase some lines again. But I just want to kind of start this oval shape so I know where my bowl rough side here. I'm going to have Let's do some apples. We need some nice round. So I'm doing, remember how we do circles. We want to start out half of a curve and then you're going to go to the other side to start the curve. And this just helps make things nice and round when we draw them. There's one apple. Okay, and once we've got our apples, then we can erase the back of our bowl line that's inside our apples. Let's do some grapes. Let's just, you know, some smaller circles. And they're kind of like a pyramid, and what I mean is, is they gradually kind of go out. So you'll have more grapes in a row as you go out. So we're going to add like a stem to where these grapes would be. We might have some smaller stems going over like so. Maybe we'll have um, a banana coming out a little bit. So we might kind of curve here and do a parallel curve with the line. Now with your bananas, you do want them to kind of come to a point. They need to come a little bit more narrow and then it kind of closes off like that into a rectangle line and a little bit here like so. Then I'm going to kind of put a, let's do a pear. So with a pear, you have like the top part that's like a smaller circle than the bottom. So I'm just going to kind of make my half of a circle. And then I'm going to start to do the bottom of the circle, but it's going to come out even fatter. Like this. And then you're going to have a little bit of a dip. So at the top of that, just kind of dip in like so and curve. See how I've got a little bit of a dip and then we're going to make our stem like so. And I'm going to erase where that bowl is coming into my pear and I'm going to erase my checkered line as well. 
I'm thinking we could do um, a little bit of a flower vase over here. So let's do that. We're going to have kind of a curved bottom. Then I'm going to have up here more of a, it's a curved top, but I want it to be slightly smaller than this because this is going to be kind of diagonal in. And then we're going to curve it back out. like so. And I'm going to erase my checkered lines from the tablecloth. Start out with a circle, like so. I'm going to start out half circle, then I'm going to add the other half and connect. Now let's try, because I, I know it's our instinct to do kind of like a cloud looking um, flower where we, we kind of go boop, 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 and then a circle. Okay, but let's go a little bit more advanced. I think y'all can do it. Let's try to do, instead of clumping all of the petals together, let's try to do individual petals. So we've got nice individual petals. And to do that, you can kind of divide your circle like so. And then group them together. So this petal can be here. We have this petal, and then this one. You can divide this again if you've got a, more space. More flowers, so maybe you have the stem coming out. See, and I'm kind of curving down. She's drooping a little bit. I'm going to make kind of organic curved lines and then curve them back to the stem. Just like that. Another stem of a flower. And this one we can kind of make a bunch, several organic shapes. And it's all about where you place the organic shapes. Meaning organic shapes are natural shapes. They're not squares, triangles, and all that kind of stuff. They're not geometric. So maybe I have an organic shape like this. And you make a curve to it. Or maybe I have an organic shape like this. And this kind of curves this way. We might have a small inside circle. We've got our fruit bowl and our flowers. And you can see on going portrait, you put in a little bit less. If you go more landscape, you can do a whole lot more um, as far as what you might want in your still life. Okay? So from here, I would like us to sharpie all of our still life items. Don't sharpie right now your tablecloth. We're just sharpieing our still life items that we've drawn. Okay, so once you've sharpied everything, then you want to take your big eraser and we want to erase our pencil marks. Okay, so once you've erased your pencil marks, so now we're going to work on your tablecloth. So this time, last time I, we did red. Remember I did red, okay? This time I'm going to do turquoise and then I've got my white and my black, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and put my turquoise out. Now you need to be careful when you paint because you've got to paint around your still life items, okay? So if you need to have different size brushes, do that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the original color, okay? So there's a bit of a different pattern going on here. I don't mind how you want to do your different values as long as the same color is not side by side. But this time I think I'm going to do a little bit simpler. I'm going to start out with turquoise. And here's a tip too. You can always lightly write out 
on your squares what color needs to be there. So I'm going to do T for turquoise, L for light, and D for dark. And I'm going to repeat that. T for turquoise, L for light, D for dark, and I'm just going to repeat all the way down. Then I've got my pattern already written out for myself. I don't have to think about it. Okay, the next thing is because I haven't contaminated this color yet with black or white, I'm going to go ahead and paint all my T's the exact color that came out of the two. Be careful to stay inside those lines because you want them to be square as best as you can. Okay, so while you have um, filled in all your T's or whatever color you're doing, now I'm going to go and add my white. I'm going to go to my light. So I'm going to come over to my white, and I'm not trying to mix the whole turquoise because eventually I'm going to have to do the black to it. So I want to use over here off to the side my white to this side. Then I can do this side with my black. And now I'm going to fill in all of my L's. Okay, so we filled in all of our lights. Now I'm ready to do my darks, which is a shade because I'm going to be adding black to my original color. I'm going to add, I'm going to flip around and I'm going to add black to my turquoise. And I'm going to fill in all my D areas. Okay, so once you've finished your tablecloth, then we can move on to your silhouette. So what I'm going to do, because this is still wet, I'm, I'm going to actually do it upside down so I don't stick my hands into it. So let's think about a pear. Pear is green, so I'm going to get my green pear. I'm going to get a light and a dark green. So I'm going to outline with my markers. So I'm going to get a dark green and outline my pear. And then I'm going to take my light green and I'm just going to kind of zigzag this over. Don't color it in, just zigzag. And that's actually a little bit darker than I wanted, so I'm going to find another green. See if I can't zigzag some lighter in there. Okay. And then I'm going to grab on, on the brush I was not using previously when I was doing the table. And I'm going to add a little bit of water. Now don't go crazy, just get the tip of your brush wet. And you can see I can move my marker colors around like a watercolor. Now I'm going to um, just grab a brown marker and kind of color in my stem a little bit. I didn't color it completely in, I just kind of dabbed it in there because I want to use my brush again to add a little bit of water to it. And then it'll fill it in for me. So this is my pear. Okay. I think I'm going to go for a blue bowl. outline it first and then I'm going to come in I think with a lighter blue and see what my brush will do with what I've done so far I should have drawn my um, 
stems for my apples, but that's okay. I will do it with my marker. So I might have this stem going this way and this one going this way and this one going this way. And lightly color it in. Add some water color, I mean add some water to it. So I think I'll have some red apples and a nice red. Now we've talked about this before. I think I'm going to have a hot spot. So sometimes when a light hits something, like you can kind of see my glasses, that white spot, there's a hot spot. So I'm going to leave an area white and then kind of shade color, slightly color like that. And then I am going to add my little bit of water. And let the blending begin. So I've got my apples done. What do you think? All right, I'm gonna do my grape stem. And with the grapes, really all you need to do is just go in a circular motion, and then you've pretty much got it. So just kind of circle, circle, and just don't fill it all the way in. Circle, circle. Do my banana. Okay, now we're ready to do our flowers. I'm going to make this into my poppy over here. Add water. might make this into kind of a sunflower. Now I'm ready to add my watercolor. Or my, now I'm ready to add my water. Okay, and now I'm going to do this flower over here. I'm thinking let's do a pretty pink. Oh, that's purple. How about pink and purple? And then we just need to do the stems. Okay, and then we're going to work on our pattern for our vase. So I'm going to grab my Sharpie and I'm going to just, you know, whatever kind of line pattern you want to do. So I'm thinking... And we don't want to go too crazy and we don't want to take too much away from our artwork, okay, from our um, fruit and our flowers. So we're just going to kind of pick and choose shapes to color. Um, and it's really just kind of balancing colors around. So I'm going to choose this pink here and I think I'll do this shape. Well, I think it's pink, but it turns out purple every time. 
purple here. And then I might do like a light purple over here. And then I think I'll, <clears throat> even though it's going to be colored in the bowl, I think I'm going to add still some sort of pattern to it to give it some variety. So let's draw a line down the middle here. Maybe I'll do just something like that. I like that. It gives it a little more um, pop. And then I don't like how blank the background is, so I'm going to add a pattern back there as well. Something real simple, not too busy because we don't want to take away from your still life. So we'll just do kind of circles with some dots maybe. And then between that, solid dots. Okay, and there we have it, you guys. This is our still life. I hope you enjoyed this lesson, and I look forward to next time. Bye!